gents. I hope you are well. It's been exciting to see and hear and even greater level, wait, to see and hear and even level of fervor in the work that you've been doing since going fully independent. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, just finished watching your MGS Delta PS5 slash pro tech video. And the question that comes to mind is what needs to happen? What needs to shift in the dev work workflows, whatever else, in order for UE5 games to not be plagued by the same performance issues that seem to hit so many titles? Would love to hear your thoughts on the matter. This is a wow. very interesting topic, and it's actually a very complex topic because where titles fall is going to vary a lot per game. And a lot of this comes down to decisions made early in development, but then also sometimes with weird priorities on the wrong things, right? right? Like, let's say your game is heavily CPU bound. This is something that's not so easy to fix. And it's usually inherent to how something was built at a deeper level. And optimizing to solve that can require a pretty significant amount of effort. But when you're GPU limited, uh, there are it tends to be a little bit easier to tweak things down. Sometimes developers will be, say, targeting too high of a resolution or they're pushing things up in certain ways that maybe are beyond what the system's designed to do. And it feels to me like almost a lack of understanding of the best possible performance settings. Like they're essentially where they're just like saying, well, okay, 40 to 60 FPS, that's fine. Yeah, and they, They've wow. decided yeah. that that is the target they're going for and they're okay with it. And I think it's, it's probably these teams lack people that are pushing very specifically to keep the frame rate where it needs to be because if you're targeting 60 or more on a console you've got to keep your eye on the prize from the beginning uh you can't this it's very rare that you can come back near the end of development and say all right let's get this running at 60. uh that usually puts you in a very bad place and we've seen it time and again and unfortunately unreal one of its strengths is it's easy to use right the whole shader node graph system and all the way everything's built, the way projects are built, it's very easy to get in there. And I do think there's probably a lot of situations where developers might get into a little trouble with how they've built up the game and rolling that stuff back, finding, sorting out the, the key issues there, not easy to do. Uh, I think, Alex, you can probably agree on some of this, but there's yeah. there's even more to it, really, right? I'm curious, because uh, Oliver's also recently covered Mafia, and you were... Oh, right. uh, uh, paying attention to Metal Gear. I'm very curious to see what you think of it. Since you're covering the console side, on the PC side, some of the issues are different. Like, I'm not dealing with someone handing me a game that's in a 40 to 60 no man's land, right? Right, uh, so true. Like, what do you think? Um, I think this is a game that probably could recover some margin of GPU performance with different settings or different resolution that would allow them to hit 60 FPS. It's especially kind of galling on PS5 Pro, where it's like, you know, you, you're in pretty similar resolution range as the base console. You're piling on PSSR, it costs a lot more in the GPU. If you undo those decisions, are you getting enough GPU time back to hit 60 FPS? I'd suggest that probably, you know, probably you could do that. Um, and in this, at least, at least you could get it into a situation where like you'd be between 48 and 60 Hertz uh, more often than not, you know, and actually hitting that uh, VRR window at 60 Hertz output. Then of course you could enable 120 hertz output with LFC VRR on the consoles, right? To help uh, fix some of these issues on PS5 consoles. That's not currently possible, right? Just the way the game has been configured. Um, and the quality mode also runs at 30 FPS with frame pacing issues. So there there's not as uh, much of a performance problem necessarily when it comes to actually having like over budget frames, but it still presents this like really awkward frame pacing problem. And then again, there you aren't really saved by VRR either. So. I just think it's like a heavy UE5 game that could be configured differently. I also feel pretty similarly about Mafia, although Mafia doesn't have the same problems, or at least not to the same extent, because like clearly in some scenes in the game, you're GPU limited on all consoles pretty much, and in performance mode in particular, and you're running into some problems where like PS5 and Pro will be dropping, but Series X will be a little bit of a more stable margin there. will be holding right. at 60 for the most part. But then there are other areas where like you'll go down to some like Southern Sicilian town and you'll just be hammering the CPU and all consoles will fail in the exact same manner with the exact same frame times basically. So there's kind of this, uh, I don't know, divergent kind of load balancing strategy there that I, I feel needs to be a little bit better. And I think this game could be cleaned up a little bit if they just had different priorities is my thinking. Um, I That's, don't think it's beyond them to, to achieve that. 
Yeah, their their design goal for whatever their performance and especially on PS5 Pro, where I just I literally don't understand it at all. I have no idea who profiles the game and says this should be running worse than the PS5 version. I just don't understand that. Like no oh. no trade offs being made there are worth it. <clears throat> yeah. Regarding Unreal Engine Five in itself, there is obviously a correlation that is occurring and everyone always points at it. There are some things you can lay the blame at the feet of UE5 for. For example, I would say up until version around 5.4, UE5 was not a good engine to be shipping titles with, uh, arguably, Uh, because a lot of the the ambitions that were sold by the engine were not CPU performant enough to make it worthwhile. And that's why you had a lot of games uh, really struggling in those areas specifically. And I'd say if you were shipping like from 5.0 to you know, like 5.3, you were actually having a lot of problems. Now is when you get to like 5.5 five and or 5.4 and above, you see a lot of the, the things that they actually initially advertised reaching a production level standpoint where their performance is a lot better. Um, and that is a problem, obviously, I think from the Unreal Engine perspective. But a lot of the other stuff I do feel is um, developer priorities, design priorities, and uh, not paying attention to things until it is dramatically too late. Especially like the whole, like I threw like a, a ton of actors in a scene thing. You shouldn't be doing that if like over time it's gonna let the game never be, have that performance be able to be recovered like John was talking about. So, um, but man, that uh, this uh, MGS thing, I think it's just really bad settings priorities, uh, probably on both machines actually, um, PS5, probably base could also probably be running better in some areas uh because like those dips you like go underwater is like why is this like underwater area run at 30 fps like what were you building in that scene like what shader is on screen at that moment that is worth that you know um so yeah and fundamentally this also comes down to lack of options right and also oh, imp- yeah. improperly implementing them. So for instance, they took away the 30 FPS option on PS5 Pro. Now you're saying, oh, I don't want to play 30 FPS, but a stable 30 FPS is still preferable to the wildly unstable unlocked frame rate for some of us. But then even on the base PS5 where they implemented it, they messed up the frame pacing. So it's not even a good 30 FPS cap. So they should have fixed that. Secondly, you know, they didn't implement VRR at all you have to force it on and then it's limited by the 48 fps minimum they could have implemented 120 hertz and with proper vr in there that would again would have helped a lot basically there's no like it's very clear that there's changes and settings that could be made to facilitate this performance profile to fix the issues but they don't expose any of that to the user right and it, it just feels like you're just stuck with this like subpar experience uh, and that's that's unfortunate because the rest of the work done in the title is awesome. Like they really did a great job overall. It's just the performance is not where it should be, and that's really a shame. But before we move away from MGS, I wanted to, also wanted to ask this question from Peter. He says, "Good day, DF chaps. Hope you've had a great time at Gamescom. I write this have, after having just watched the MGS tech review. The game was reviewed very well, despite the obvious technical issues." In my opinion, this is a problem as strong reviews, which may lead to strong sales, sends the wrong message to publishers that it's okay to release a subpar game from a technical point of view and fix later. Um, Yeah, I mean, when you think about that, Oliver, it's like it does kind of feel like this is something we've seen before. Um, (laughs) And sometimes it never gets fixed, like Elden Ring. And it's a shame. But it's it's a bummer, too, because the overall work done on the product is really good. It's just let down by some of these decisions made. But do you think this sends the wrong message to developers? I don't know. It's always tricky to get in the heads of, like, other reviewers. (laughs) And I think it's fine for other reviewers to have maybe different priorities. But I do maybe think that maybe some of the reason why these technical problems aren't showing up in reviews as much is because people who are reviewing these games maybe aren't so sure of themselves when it comes to discussing the technical side of these games. And they aren't sure exactly how to express themselves. And so they aren't sure, maybe totally comfortable putting that into the score and saying this game has this definitive technical problem that they need to fix. And therefore my score is like a six or a seven instead of an eight or a nine. Maybe that's playing into a little bit. Um, But certainly like... You know, if you do have these priorities, then you can always watch our content and make your own judgments from that. Because um, certainly, like, you know, the perspective from other viewers, understandably, it's a little bit different, right? 
like in my ideal world, yes, they should be penalized more. But I also know a lot of people who just don't experience these technical issues to the same degree of acuteness that, that I do. So I'm not sure that's a totally fair judgment on my part to just uh, prescribe my own judgments. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I tend to think that way. If there's one more point I want to chime in on, though, is that Konami has another big Unreal Engine 5 title shipping very soon, Silent Hill F. Uh, I played this for three hours at the show. And I might do, I want to save some of my thoughts for the actual video that will happen at some point sooner than later, I guess. Uh, that runs awesome in comparison, I will say. I saw it running on a base PS5 and on a PC, and the base PS5 version was basically like a locked 60. You know, just it could get worse later, who knows? But that's always the caveat you got to throw out there. But like the performance was excellent, it ran very consistently. The cutscenes do switch to 30 FPS, but I'm okay with that. They looked good. The blur was good. The quality of the assets, the animation was superb. And then the game itself ran very, very smooth. Uh, it looked great on both platforms. So it feels like, at least in this case, they're shipping something that's actually in really good shape with good image quality, good performance. So and that was the base PS5. So it's very, it's a very different situation from MGS. Uh, where I don't think we have to worry about that same problem cropping up here, which is great. So, interesting. But that, of course, was co-developed with Neobards, uh, whereas uh, MGS Delta was co-developed with Virtuous, same as Oblivion Remastered. And their track record for this kind of stuff speaks for itself. <laughs>